Have you ever created a really cool avatar in Stable Diffusion and wanted to animate it and make it speak? Well, now you can, thanks to the power of this GitHub repository right here, the Thinplate Spline Motion Model for Image Animation. As you can see from the example down here, you've got a driving video, a static image, and the static image moves according to the driving video. There's a couple of ways that you can run this. I'm going to be showing you how to run it using the Hugging Face Space and also how to install it locally and run it on your own computer. So first of all, we'll start with the Hugging Face Space. That's one of these links down here. You got integrated into Hugging Face. That is by far the easiest way to do it because it's just three steps. Step one, provide your face image. Step two, provide your driving video. Step three, press the generate button. You can't get any easier than that. Three steps and you will get your animated face. Terribly easy, huh? Okay, so let's move on to the installing it locally bit. I'm gonna be using Anaconda. You just click download, install Anaconda, start Anaconda, and then you can run all these various Anaconda commands such as conda create minus minus name, thin plate spline because I'm good at names and I am using Python 3.9. Of course, I've already created my environment, so I am just going to activate it now. There it is, I have activated my environment. You want to git clone the repository as well, download all that code, and then once you have downloaded it, change directory into your thin plate spine directory. You'll want to create a checkpoints directory as well, just to make things nice and organized, because there are the links for the pre-trained models. There's the Google Drive example, and the one you want to download is this Vox PTH tar. Download that one, put it into your checkpoints directory, and then we can almost get around to running the pip install minus R one. Now I change a few things in here. I set pillow to 9.2 and I also remove the torch and torch vision lines. So let's have a quick look at that requirements. There they are. So you've got the pillow line I changed to 9.2. And I also get rid of Torch and Torch Vision. Why? Because you may want to install Torch ever so slightly differently. Basically, pick the thing from the grid that is appropriate to you. So I'm using Linux, PIP, Python, CUDA 11.6, and that's the line that I'm going to be using. So I copy and paste that in there. There we go. That's me installed PyTorch. But maybe you've got an AMD GPU, so you'd want that line instead. Or maybe you want to use Conda, so you'd use that line instead. There you go. So there's lots and lots of different ways that you can run this. There's a CPU option. So pick the one that is appropriate to you and install PyTorch that way. Then you can install the requirements. So pip install minus r requirements.txt. There it is. We pop that in. So there, we now have absolutely everything installed and we are ready to go. Now with your driving video, there are a few tips for the image. You want an image that looks exactly like the images that are shown in the example here. So you've got the head, head to toe there, head to toe, <laughs> head to toe, head to shoulders there. Do you want the chin fairly close to the bottom? It wants to match your driving video as closely as possible. So as you can see, that one is okay, but maybe there's a there's a little bit too much space there. So another trick you can do is you can just use image to image. Then if you take a frame out of your video, then you can generate a frame that matches that video a little bit more closely. Then you will have quite a good matching image okay so now you've got your image you've got your video ready to go we want to run that example command so we scroll down here you don't have to worry about training because you've downloaded a pre-trained model all you want is the image animation demo so you can copy past to that that's the example there i have of course changed a few things because i've got my own video and my own animation so we'll just do one here and this is using a, uh, a bad video so here is the bad video, got them in my assets. So there is a bad video example. So it's okay. I mean, the face is in frame and you've got the chin and the, the top of the head, but look how she's moving around a lot and she goes out of frame there. So that is a bad video example. Or we've got the good video example. So there she is. Although the video is moving around a little bit and her head goes down and her chin goes to the bottom, it it's... It's not too bad. It's not too wildly out of frame. So it can handle that. So that's a, a good video. So let's have a look at how those come out. So here is the bad video example. There's the bad video example. As you can see, it's a little bit wobbly. It's a little bit wobbly. And here is the good video example. That's much nicer, isn't it? That's much nicer. The head isn't going everywhere. 
and the mouth opening is good and all that sort of stuff. So there are the good and the bad video examples. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can just run it through GFP GAN as well. There's all sorts of information there on how to install GFP GAN. It's also in your stable diffusion extras. You can do batch processing and do a whole load of images that way. And then when you run it through GFP GAN, you will get much cleaner eyes and mouth. And as you can see there, it will fill in the teeth for you as well. So there's how to power up your video, make it a bit bigger, make it a bit cleaner as well. There you go. Fantastic. eh? So before you go, do check out one of these links and learn even more geeky stuff.